giveaway that you don't follow baseball at all is that you would have spent any portion of the past 48 hours discussing a relief pitcher getting booed over blown saves. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. And you know, on those shows, the ones involving the Steelers and the Penguins, I actually do talk about football and hockey. So the objective here on Daily Shot of Pirates is to talk about baseball. But unfortunately, still in Pittsburgh, there's way too much of a culture of Grab whatever the lowest hanging fruit or running out of hot dogs or wait, was that hot dog buns or any other piece of nonsense and run with it because, I mean, I'm just going to say this, there's a preponderance of hot take stuff on social media, on talk radio, and the millisecond that David Bednar's coming off the field the other day and somebody boos or a handful of somebody's or even a bunch of somebody's boo, that's all they hear. They didn't need to watch the game. They didn't need to know who was in the lineup or who's in the starting rotation or the bullpen. They didn't need to do any work. They didn't need to come around the stadium. They didn't need to come into the clubhouse. They didn't need to ask any questions. They just saw that the closer, who's from the Pittsburgh area, got booed. Boom! And way, way more unfortunate than that, people flock to it. They do. I'm not being dumb here. I'm not being naive and saying that that's not what's popular. Of course it's what's popular. People eat it up. The hot takes artists would go out of business in a split second if people would stop eating it up. But they don't. The overwhelming percentage of feedback that I got to yesterday's show, which really wasn't even about that, was about that. Well, okay, but... My show, my rules. And you know what I have to say to you today? The starting pitching's been awesome. It really has. And I'm here to take one on the chin on that count because that matters. In the last six games, the Pirates' starting pitchers have allowed a total of nine earned runs over 38 and two-thirds innings. That's a 2.09 ERA, not to mention a healthy distribution of innings. If anything happened that really, really, really should resonate toward the remainder of this season on Tuesday, it would be that Martin Perez went out there and threw eight-inning one-hit ball. And yeah, I know that's what made the ending hurt that much more, but it still happened as did Edward Olivares' two home runs, which also would be the subject of considerable conversation if this were a more mature baseball town that was more used to discussing baseball as opposed to frivolity related to baseball or peripherally related to baseball. This thing, this Bednar slash booing thing, would have died a gory death within about an hour of the time it happened in a baseball market where they're more used to discussing baseball. We aren't here. It's different. And the people in the market who are paid to commentate on sports most definitely aren't there. Most of them aren't even interested in baseball, much less the local team. So because they've got to fill X number of hours on the show or X number of tweets on social or whatever it is, and they can't look like they're completely ignoring the Pirates since the Pirates are at the top of the standings. Hey, here's a gift. Let's talk about booing the closer who's from Mars PA. I'll talk about Perez instead. I'll talk about Mitch Keller bouncing back the way he did. Talk about Bailey Falter. Bailey freaking Falter. Six no-hit innings against the best lineup in baseball. I'll talk about 
Marco Gonzalez, and you'd better believe I'll talk about Jared Jones, who's taking the ball again tonight in Philadelphia for the opening of a four-game set against the Phillies. I don't know, I can't know how long this is going to last. Even bad rotations will have a couple of nice turns over the course of a summer, so you got to be careful with this. But at the same time, you know, you're watching these games. You watched Perez for the better part of two and a half hours on Tuesday, and you saw how boring he made that game. You saw how he dictated everything that the Tigers were doing, read their swings, adjusted accordingly, changed speeds, worked methodically, mixed in his entire arsenal. This is what a veteran does. This is looking like it's a good signing by Ben Charrington. I was hopeful about this signing all along. The part that I'm describing where I would have to take a beating on this subject wouldn't be related to Perez. It would be to the rotation as a whole. I'd made quite the point for several months that a real live number two behind Keller was going to be needed. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I I do see more than I'd expected out of Gonzalez uh, already, just because he's in the majors, see more than I'd expected from Falter. Perez is probably a little bit ahead of where I thought he'd be. He's got a steady back of the baseball card, and he's coming here from playing for a World Series champion, so it's not like this is going to overwhelm him. And Mitch, we've talked about plenty. So the two variables in this are Jones and, of course, not to be forgotten, Paul Skeens. Looking around baseball right now, and you're seeing the top prospects in the sport being called up. They're not waiting for Super 2. So my feeling, and this isn't to say that the Pirates represent the industry norm in any economic capacity, but my feeling is that Skeens will be up sooner rather than later, in which case, yeah, these are nice problems to have. And this just might be a nice rotation to have. Almost, almost as welcome as this subject matter itself. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of... Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. J1Q is, of course, on the booing of David Bednar. That's all I got. That's all I got yesterday. And if anyone who listens to this show who sends in entries on a regular basis can counter that, feel free to do so. All I got was on that subject. So here it is from Eddie who says, Hey, Rowdy, tell us. I've been a season ticket holder for 25 years. I'll boo when I want. You've been here for only two months. Eddie's not asking a question there, obviously. Eddie's putting forth something. He's putting forth, I guess, a message to Rowdy. But you know what? It's the only message that I've heard that resonates with me. This look, this is what everybody was talking about. We're going to talk about it, okay? You, this is your segment, not mine. I talked about starting pitching in mine. To me, my stance on what fans can and can't or should or shouldn't do has never changed, and it's got nothing to do with closers or how successful or lousy a player is, and certainly nothing to do with whether or not they're local. It has everything to do with you bought a ticket. You can cheer or boo to your heart's content. There are rules and guidelines inside the stadium. You can't swear. You can't shout out hate speech. You can't be 
vulgar, they promote a family environment there. But cheering and booing don't fall into either of those categories. You can do that. You can cheer and you can boo. That's it. That's it. That's it. I never, I, I never ever tell people what to do. I don't tell people how to react in a stadium. You bought the ticket. In the press, we don't buy tickets. We have media passes. We're there to work. We're not there to watch the game and have our feet up and have nachos. And believe me, if I was buying a ticket to go to the game, I would have my feet up and have some nachos. But I don't. So I have no right to say to anybody what they should be spewing out at the ballpark, again, unless it you know violates common sense and good rules. Which the Pirates have, by the way. They have good rules at PNC Park. Most stadiums do. Most arenas do. But booing doesn't violate any of those rules. And in fact, it's been part of sports forever. So I don't think about this from the Bednar perspective. I don't think about this from the Telez perspective. And I get what you're saying about Rowdy and his reaction. I, I went over that yesterday. Not going to repeat it today. Rowdy's an interesting guy, and I think he'll ultimately be good for this team. But whoever booed could boo. Whoever cheered could cheer. This isn't even a this isn't even a discussion I can extend out for longer than a minute and a half. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody who listens to Daily Shot of Pirates, and we're going to do another one of these tomorrow. And guess what I'm not bringing up? Even if you ask... 